So here I was, chilling, having a great day, drinking my off-brand LaCroix from Heb, and several of you decided to send me this article called Stop Using React. And apparently, several of you wanted to get the opinion of a React fanboy of what he felt about this article. So here we are, and I will give you my two cents on the arguments in this article. Number one is React is slow, which I'm not surprised by. I am aware that React is slower than JavaScript, and it's kind of like me saying you should stop using Python uh, because C is faster. Well, you know what? I don't want to go program in C and, you know, do data science and machine learning because it's a nightmare and I get, you know, memory overflows and then my program crashes and then I have a sad time. I just want to jump into Python, boot up pandas, and be like, doot, 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 and be done with my homework and just bam. I don't know why I said homework. I don't do homework anymore, but uh, I think you get my gist. The trade-off for picking React is it is going to be slower than regular JavaScript, and usually that is okay. And if it's not okay, then just don't pick React for that project. Point number two is it's expensive. Do you care about people who can't afford to pay for expensive websites on their data plan? idea being is if we take two websites, one of them that has React on it and one of them that does not have React on it, if we are on a restricted mobile plan or we are paying per the data that we use on our phone, that we are using more data to visit the React site because React is there and therefore it's more expensive for those users. Which for the most part I agree with because React is not optimized to be the smallest JavaScript framework. But I don't think this is true for JavaScript frameworks in general. My understanding of this, which may very well be wrong, so correct me below if I am, because I haven't studied this a bunch, but websites that are just regular HTML, when I go from one page to another page, they are downloading the entire HTML file again. And so if I navigate to a bunch of different pages, I am downloading the entire HTML for that page for every navigation. And so the idea being, if you're using JavaScript to do client-side routing, is you can save on loading the entire HTML page on every time you navigate. And so if I go from page one to page two, all I am downloading when I go to the second page is any kind of API requests that I need and maybe a little bit more JavaScript, which means if we're only visiting one page, then yes, static HTML is less data to load that single page. But if I start navigating to a bunch of different pages, I think there is x number of pages that you reach where the html that you're visiting you are loading more of the html than if you did that with javascript and so there reaches a point where if you expect the user to be on your site for a while and visit a bunch of different pages that it can actually be more cost effective to use javascript and to load pages that way rather than doing static html now i will admit i haven't done the math on it so it may very well be that loading javascript and html is just less efficient up until like 100 page loads or something like maybe your html page is only 20 kilobytes but then your HTML page that has React on it is like 500 kilobytes, but then every page load after that is only like, I don't know, 10 kilobytes, whereas the HTML one is 20 every single time. And so it takes a really long time for the React and the HTML one to catch up to the static HTML. Like you have to do it at like a thousand freaking page loads or something like that. And then obviously you should just go with static HTML. I just bring this up because it's not exactly clear cut that loading only static HTML is going to be less data over the long run compared to a site that loads HTML and JavaScript. Now, of course, you don't have to load React to do those tricks with JavaScript. So React is adding extra weight. Point three is it's inaccessible. Hundreds of millions of users access the internet from feature phones with a 2G connection. When you load all your JavaScript onto a feature phone, all the user sees is a spinning wheel. Let's first address the elephant in the room, and that's you don't just have to show them a loading spinner. You can use something like Next.js and server-side render the page, and then they'll be able to see content right away. But of course, there's downsides to that as well, as it's not going to be interactive right away. So when the page loads, it's still gonna take some time for it to be interactive. So you can see content on the page, but when you actually tap on the button to do something, uh, it doesn't work for a little bit. And so that can be an awkward experience. So that's not like a clear answer always. So sometimes a loading spinner is better than showing content that is not interactive. The main thing I'll say about this is, yeah, it does suck if you got a slow phone and you're trying to access an article and then it shows you a loading spinner for 10 seconds before you can even see it. And then you just came for that one article and then you leave. That's not great. 
But what also sucks is when I visit a website and then I navigate a page and I navigate another page and then I go to another page and then each time it's loading for a second every single time, that can get really annoying. That happens to me on GitHub. I'm not on a slow phone, but just can be kind of annoying to do that. And so I would rather it load everything up front, take 10 seconds, take five seconds, load it all, and then have smoother navigation after that. Sometimes that's a nicer experience. Sometimes that's a worse experience. It really just depends on what you're building. Point four. React goes against what the web was made for. Here's the general idea of React. You download all the JavaScript a website needs for like seven seconds in a row without showing anything. But once you do that, you never have to download resources again because you've made a single page application. Firstly, I don't think that is the general idea of React. And there's a technique called code splitting, which many sites use now, where instead of loading all of the JavaScript all at once, you load it incrementally as you use the website. Secondly, I think it's a weak argument to say just because the web hasn't traditionally worked this way that it shouldn't work this way. Are we not allowed to innovate on the web? Like if you want to tell me why you think this innovation is bad for X, Y, and Z reason, like you did in this post with the previous points, I think that's great. We can have a discussion about it. But just saying React is bad because it doesn't work like traditional HTML, it's like whatever, dude. The last point is it's made by dot, 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 those people. And then he links to a Wikipedia article that talks about the lawsuits that Facebook is involved in. If you don't want to use React because it's made by Facebook, fair enough. I get it. But the thing for me is the people that have done the things that you don't like at Facebook are not the same people that are working on React. Yes, Facebook sponsors React and pays the people that work on React, but those are two different sets of people. And personally, I am okay using React, even though maybe I don't accept all the things that Facebook does or agree with all their policies. That is not going to stop me to utilizing the great technology that Facebook has created. Yes. React is slower than a vanilla JavaScript project. Yes, React is bigger than a project that doesn't use React. And yes, some people misuse React and use it on websites that don't need it and they just bloat it for no reason. But that also doesn't mean that you should never use React for any projects and then we should just extinguish React. With that all said, I am very interested in Svelte because I think I can get a lot of the productivity gains that I have in React with it, but with a much smaller footprint when it comes to the size of the library and the size of the JavaScript that it spits out at the end of the day. So I'm very excited for that and there might be some Svelte content coming soon.